Hey guys, so when you're getting your studio ready to record, uh, say drums or any instrument where you have to have some ambience of the room, I'm sure you do a lot of work on, you know, sending a foam, making sure reflective objects have been removed from the room, but how much do you pay attention to the humidity? Uh, in theory, at least, the humidity should have uh, somewhat of an impact on the sound of the room. So we are gonna do a little experiment today and just see how big of an impact it has. So before we get to the sound samples, let's talk a little bit about the setup I have and even before that, a little bit about just the theory behind why the humidity change should affect the sound. So as hopefully you know, as you increase the temperature of the air, the air molecules, they have more energy and they're able to be spaced apart further, right? So there's more space between each um, molecule of air. That allows more water to get in between, to, to kind of fill the air up. So your max amount of humidity increases as your temperature increases as well. So what does that really mean? That means that, you know, if it's getting hotter in the summer, it's probably also getting more humid and that increased water is making the air more dense. And this is effectively um, impeding the sound waves from being able to travel, right? They're not gonna be able to, to move, in theory, move through as quickly. So to set up this sort of test, what I did was I did three beats, then you're, you were gonna hear, listen to them in a second. Um, and I played these three beats uh, two, twice over two different days. So the first day, I just ran a couple of humidifiers until it was actually hazy inside of this room, it was so humid. Then after that, that was kind of like in the middle of the day, then I ran a dehumidifier until it got late in the day. Um, and then the next day I basically ran it from morning until, until evening. Uh, in total, between the humid day and the non-humid day, I took out about, I'd say about five gallons of water and I'm not exaggerating there. I actually, as you can see here, I had a Home Depot bucket. These buckets are supposed to be about five gallon buckets and I filled it all the way to the brim. So it's actually probably a little bit more than five gallons I took out. As far as room size, just so you can have a little bit of a relation here, um, this size of this room is just shy of 1600 cubic feet. So that's five gallons of water out of a 1600 cubic foot room. As far as the sound samples are concerned, like I said, I do have three beats for humid and dry. Um, and we're gonna A, B those, but I didn't wanna just do a straight up, you know, full mix wet, you know, full mix humid versus full mix dry, because the reality is that the further away the microphone is, those mics should have a bigger, should be impacted more by the humid or um, dry air. So on the playback, we're actually gonna do basically four sets for each beat. We're gonna listen to just the direct mics, which I'm guessing are gonna have little or no impact. Um, then we're gonna A, B the overheads. So these are earthworks. Then we're going to A, B my room mics. I have a pair of mics that I'm using as, as a mid side room mic setup. Um, if you're not sure what that is, I'll have a link in the description if you want more info on that. And then after that, we'll do the, the full mix, A, B between the humid and the dry. And then we'll repeat this whole process again for the second beat and then the third beat.
So what did you guys think? Did you think there was a big noticeable difference or did it seem like, uh, you know, insignificant to you? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I'm putting out a lot of other videos like this as well. Things for helping you with, you know, your home recording setup and other things like, you know, drum lessons and reviews on cymbals and sticks. So if you don't want to miss out on all this great stuff, then don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, peace.